What's up guys, this is Nick from stridewise.com and today I'm reviewing these 14.7 ounce jeans from the denim company known for its demon fighting peach baby, Momotaro. Made by hand without compromise is the slogan of the Kojima-based company Momotaro. Kojima is really well known and considered by many as the birthplace of Japanese denim. It's really well known for it. A lot of denim heads will often go there to visit their famous Jeans Street, which is where you can find Momotaro among some other very prestigious Japanese denim companies. And they really do make a lot of it by hand. That's kind of their big thing. If you can check out this unbelievably cool documentary they put up on their YouTube channel, you can see they really do legit make a lot of their jeans by hand. It's a really, really nice touch. The company's name means Peach Boy, and it's named after a sort of folk hero in Okayama. The story goes that the gods sent a baby that was inside a giant peach and was born out of the big peach to a childless couple who couldn't have a baby. And then as the baby grew up, he went on to fight ogres and demons and so on. And that's why on this cool little sheepskin leather patch on the waist, you've got a little baby coming out of a giant peach. But let's take a close look at the jeans themselves, at this pair here of G015-MZ, 14.7 ounce deep indigo narrow tapered zipper fly jeans. So this is 14.7 ounce denim, so it's midweight. Actually some of the most lightweight Japanese jeans I own, but check back in some when I start getting the lightweight stuff. Uh, like a lot of Japanese jeans, it's woven by vintage shuttle looms. And despite that more old fashioned production process, which for a lot of jeans like Pure Blue Japan produces a very slubby and neppy denim, this is not the case for Momotaro. It's pretty uniform and slick. It does have some very fine hair on it. It's not as slick as like Ironheart's, but it's even like a tad glossy and that's because of the way they weave it, and because they use Zimbabwe yarn, which has a bit more of a natural sheen to it. Momotaro is very proud of their Zimbabwe cotton. They use a lot of fun phrasing on their website, like grown through the grace of Africa's greatest environment. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hand cropped, which helps them to keep out plant matter and impurities and minimize damage to the thread. And it's long staple, the threads are very, very long. Zimbabwe cotton is very white, uh, it's easy to dye, and it has a little flexibility to it as well. It's actually most often used in European dress shirts, but it makes pretty solid jeans as well. Momotaro calls this the world's most deep color. <laughs> it is made with synthetic indigo, and the white weft is quite visible here as well. They deliberately dye it so that at the center of the thread isn't dyed, and it stays white, so that when it fades, it fades the way people want it to. Now as for the details, I was really happy to finally get a pair of Japanese jeans with a zipper fly. Very convenient, very easy to go to the bathroom. But you do still get a nice uh, old antique button here that has an engraving of a peach on it with Momotaro jeans around it. And there are peaches all over these jeans, it's really cool. It's on all the inside of all the uh, copper rivets here. You've also got of course on the sheepskin patch with the little Momotaro boy coming out of the peach. And it's also all over the inside of the yoke. You've got these, uh, these really cool peach tree designs. I think it's a really cool touch. Unlike a lot of jeans that use duck canvas for the lining of the pockets, with these jeans you've got some nice checkered flannel and on the inside of the right pocket you've got a cool little patch there which I would imagine is grown up Momotaro facing off against a demon. It's very Japanese looking. And there's of course a giant peach hovering in between the two of them. And then you've got the threads. Now Momotaro says they've got about 20 different types of threads in the construction of these jeans. Everything from cotton threads to core yarn threads. And they change in color a little bit. Most of the stitching is a sort of a deep dark orange gold sort of color. But they're also lighter colored yellow in here as well, unlike the belt loops and around the back pockets, including this pretty snazzy swoop that you get on the back of the right pocket. But not all the stitching is a yellow variant. In fact, I think one of the coolest things about these jeans and one of the most remarkable and outstanding things about the jeans, at least to laymen who are not really ensconced in the world of Japanese denim, is the pink stitching that Momotaro is pretty well known for and you'll find this in a lot of their jeans. You've got a pink selvage ID down the bottom, but you've also got this really, really cool pink stitching going down the inside of both legs as well. I think it's just really, really cool. I mean, and it's true that a lot of people aren't gonna notice it, but because of this pink kind of motif, personally, I try to just wear these jeans with a blue, gray, black, white sort of motifs as opposed to more earthy brown sorts of colors. I think that goes better with the pink, but you know, that's just a personal preference. 
So after taking care of these jeans, the label says you want to wash them separately, you want to wash them inside out, you should not dry clean them, and you should not tumble dry them either. So that's pretty standard care for these sorts of jeans, are uh, really, really worth emphasizing. Do not wash these in your washing machine with any other items of clothing because the color will bleed and you will ruin all of your other clothes. It's a very, very important point. Now, as for how often you want to wash them, a lot of people out there, they will wash them once every 60 wears, 70, 80, 90 wears. It's always a very, very individual thing. This denim is not quite as thick as a lot of those, you know, 20 ounce jeans out there that people feel like they can wash practically never. These are going to feel musty a little bit more quickly than some of the thicker denim out there. For me personally, I've worn these uh, about 50 times so far. I have not washed them. And even though synthetic indigo is meant to be quicker to fade, Momotaro jeans are sort of well known for not fading all that fast. For all my other jeans that I have, by the time I've worn them this much, they're getting nice and like electric blue around the crutch. But although there's a little bit of fading on the back pockets and you can sort of see the beginnings of some ever so slightly light blue around the whiskers, nonetheless, it's gonna be quite a while. A lot of people, it takes them over a year to get the nice sorts of fades they want. And eventually, you're gonna get a pair like this three-year-old pair that I found on Reddit. This is what you can potentially look forward to if you really love these jeans and wear them often. Now as for the fit and the sizing, if you've seen my other reviews, you probably know what I'm about to say here. I have large thighs and a pretty tall butt crack, so I'm normally trying to get a relaxed tapered fit with a pretty high rise. And the G015-MZ jeans, or MZ jeans if I'm being a proper American, this is what Okiyama Denim calls a lifter's cut with a lot of room in the thighs and the glutes, but it does have a very, very dramatic taper to the point that they're still kind of hard to get off when I've cut them on, when I've muscled them on, I should say, because these jeans, I ordered them like a little bit smaller than I kind of would have if I'd been able to try them on in store. I got them online. The Nemo.com said that they're 32 inch waist, which is what I normally wear in American jeans, is actually closer to a 33 inch waist. Uh, and we all know that you know uh, Japanese jeans tend to run a bit small. So I thought I was gonna be all right, but when I got them, I really, uh, I could not get them on. So, you know, should I return them? Yes, should I have ordered a bigger size? Yes, was I too lazy to return them? Yes, am I too cheap to pay the shipping fee because the Nemo.com does not uh, do free exchanges? Uh, yes, all those things are true. So instead, I just sort of muscled them on and I just kind of lunged around in these for many, many weeks around Brooklyn, stretching them out, stretching out my legs, trying really hard to get this down to stretch around me. And after about a month of that, they're pretty good fitting, you know, like they're still pretty slim jeans, but now they're like a very well fitting slim jean. They're still the slimmest jeans I own, but I think they work out because again, this is a nice generous amount of room in the thighs and the glutes. So once everything was stretched out, I've got a nice pair of slim jeans. Although again, really, really dramatic taper, so much so that some people might not be a big fan of it, but I prefer those sorts of cuts myself. Now I would have preferred a slightly higher rise, yeah, but honestly it goes fine for me. It's like a very uh, slim sort of jean, it's a very lean sort of denim, it's a very clean sort of denim. And this is the kind of jean that I'll wear for like more modern slim fitting sorts of outfits and it works just fine. Now as for the price, uh, I got these, as I said, on denimio.com where at the moment they cost about $230. On Mamataro's official website, they cost about $300. Uh, so you would think denimio was the best buy, but actually at okayamadenim.com, you can get these exact jeans for $210. So if you're looking for the best bargain, I would recommend you go to Okayama Denim. And in the grand scheme of things, uh, that's a pretty good price, under $250 for a pair of Japanese jeans. Uh, it's not bad at all. In the general, uh, in the general like, price range for Japanese jeans, uh, it's pretty common to have jeans that are over 300 bucks. Uh, if something's under 250, I priced that in the uh, pretty moderately good value category. All right, I'm gonna run through the pros and then the potential cons that could also be pros depending on your own individual preference because that's kind of how these sorts of things work. Uh, the pro, under 250 bucks, it's pretty decent value. Not the cheapest jeans in the world, but for Japanese jeans, under 250 bucks, at least if you get them on like Okayama or Denimio, uh, yeah, pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with that price. Also, I like the fact that it is 14.7 ounces. Uh, it's like not too thick. I've got a lot of jeans, like some PBJs, for instance, that are thick as carpet and you really just cannot wear them in summer. These are, uh, they're more versatile in that regard. You can wear them in a bunch of different sorts of climates. The stitching is really, really nice and tight. After a month of wearing these, I don't have any loose threads anywhere at all, which is like a really big upside. Uh, a lot of my jeans out there, they will get loose threads after that amount of wear. But not these, and that's like perhaps at least because they've been handmade, which is a really nice aspect, and it's one that Mamatara themselves really, really strongly emphasizes in their marketing. Potential downsides, uh, it is synthetic indigo. Again, that is actually very, very common in Jap even in Japanese jeans, so that might not be a huge downside, but uh, some people just want natural indigo jeans. That's fair enough. This pink salvage ID, the pink stitching, 
I absolutely love it. I'm crazy about it. For a lot of guys, it's not, I don't know, masculine enough or whatever. Uh, if that's a concern for you, yeah, these are, they're a little bit pink, these jeans. So that might be a potential downside for you as well. The fades takes a pretty long time to fade. Uh, yeah, again, relative to a lot of other jeans out there, other Japanese jeans, most of my Japanese jeans, after about a month, I'm getting a nice bit of fading uh, around the crotch. I haven't had these yet fading like that. So yeah, takes a longer time to fade. They're pretty well known for that. And the denim itself, I really like it. It is Zimbabwe cotton, which is hand-picked. There's a lot of really cool upsides to that. But uh, it is not as hairy and fuzzy and neppy and slubby as a lot of Japanese jeans out there. For a lot of people, that is the big priority for them, getting Japanese jeans. And while they are hairier than like Iron Hearts, for instance, or they're, they're a little, little bit fuzzy, it's a pretty clean aesthetic. It's a pretty clean look. So these are not as in-your-face, irregular, slubby as a lot of big Japanese denim fans really, really like. All right, those are my thoughts on Mamatara's jeans. I hope in the future I can come back to this brand and check out some of their other models. But as it is, this is a pretty nice introduction to the sort of denim and the sort of quality you're going to get with a Mamatara brand. So the full written review with a bunch of pictures and some extra details are in the description below. And make sure you subscribe as well because I got a whole lot more jeans reviews and boot reviews and all those sorts of men's fashion-y types of stuff coming up.